Hi there, and welcome to another Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers How to Photoshop lesson. Okay, today we're going to be looking at an artist called Marcelo Monreal, or Monreal. He is famous for taking portraits of famous people and adding flowers as if they are full of like beauty and wellness. And you can see he removes the face, the flowers come through, and he makes these basically digital collages. So that's what we're going to be doing today in Photoshop. To do this, you'll need a photograph of a face and you'll need some photographs of flowers. Now, as if luck would have it, I have both those things at hand. So here is a portrait of a face that I've taken. And the first thing I need to do is just unlock the background layer. And then we need to do some cutting out of the face, maneuvering it, leaving a gap, and then pasting in lots of flowers. I've got a folder here that is full of flowers, so you can see I'll be able to use those in a moment. Now, in order to do this, if we look at the artist's work, I'm just going to minimize that. You see, it's, it's a sort of organic shape that he cuts out. Now, we could do this in real life with a pair of scissors, paper, make an actual collage, or we're doing a digital collage. So we're going to use the lasso tool to do the selection. We've used this before, so we should be familiar with it. With the lasso tool, we need to find the right part of the face. I'm just going to go and have a look at one in a bit more detail. And I'm going to place it on one of these ones where it's like the whole front of the face. So we will go around very carefully, following the shape of the face and the cheek. Around, leave a small piece of chin so we can see that there is a piece there. Very carefully around the side of the face, up around to the eyes, around the eyebrow, and up and over to there. In the past, I've talked to you about copying and pasting, and we've done quite a lot of that. Today, we're going to do some cut and pasting. So as if we're actually physically cutting it out with scissors, so we're going to go edit, cut. It will then disappear. We go edit, paste, and it will reappear on a separate layer, which we can then move around to place it where we want to have a gap so that we can have the flowers coming out from underneath, and we can work out exactly where to place it in a moment. Now, once we've done that, we will need to add a layer behind. So we'll create a new layer by clicking on this new layer tool here. We will drive that to the bottom. We need to go for a fairly dark color in the background. So we'll click on our square color selector, color picker. Find a nice darkish pink. I think it would work quite well for this. You see, we, we can select different colors by moving the rainbow bar here. And then we can move it around here. And you see the color that comes up here? This is the color that we're picking. And I think somewhere in that range there should be OK. Once we've picked it, we're going to use the paint bucket tool. We're going to click on layer that it's on. We're going to click on it. And we're going to have a darker layer here. Now, we're going to smooth out the edges a little bit later on as well, because we don't want it to look really amateur. -y. So now we've got. The background bit, we've got the face cut out. We need to look at getting some flowers. Now, one of the great things about saving files onto a computer and using Photoshop is you can drag and drop a file from your folder on top of, and it will appear in Photoshop. Now, sometimes the file pictures will turn up different sizes. So once they're there, you go on the Move tool. You make sure you've got Auto Select and Show Transform Controls selected. And then we can scale down the picture of the flower. We can then organize our layers. Now you see this little square here? That means I need to rasterize my layer. So I click on rasterize layer. That means I can then edit it. I will select that layer and drop it behind the face. So there is my first flower, like so. Now, obviously, I don't want the background on this. So this will take a small amount of time to cut out, we can use the quick select tool 
and have it on plus. Have a relatively small brush. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. And we can select all the bits of the flower that we want to use. Now, you see this bit here? Didn't want that bit, so we click on the minus. Click on the bits we don't want, like so. And like so. And if you get too much, we'll cross bit again. And there we go. There are, is our flower. And again, we will use the edit cut, edit paste, because we are doing a collage, so cut and edit paste. And then we can remove the background layers. So now we have the first, oh, make sure we click on the right layers, the first of our flowers that is going to be inside the face. So we'll put that one there. And we'll press enter. Now, if we wanted to turn it round, we could click on it and we could use the turning tool to turn it so it looks in a better position. I really like the idea of it being there. And that is flower number one. So we will repeat the process. We'll use some forget me nuts. So we will drag those over. I'm actually going to put these on the top layer to begin so I can see what I'm editing. I will do the selection and then I will do the scaling. So if I use the quick select tool again, I click on the forget me not and select the pieces that I want to use. I might actually bring in a little bit of the stem there, maybe. Definitely not that there. Maybe a little bit, and then like that. And that bit, and that bit, and that bit, and that bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. So remember, we're going to get edit, cut. Won't let me do cut yet because I haven't rasterized layer. Remember that little square? Always remember to rasterize your layers. So we've done the rasterizing. Edit, cut, edit, paste. And then I can just literally bin the background because it's as if I was cutting out on paper in that background as well then I can do all this in one go so I'm going to change the layer order I'm going to rescale it twist it around a bit and you can see it will build up a digital collage of overlapping flowers I'll take some more seconds like that there we go maybe make it a little bit smaller as well and you can see how the image is starting to build up. Now we will choose a, another flower. This nice pink dahlia. That will work really well. So you drag that over. Remember, it's put it at the top. So we're going to do each step at a time. So we go to the top. When we do this, it's a good chance to, to rasterize the layer while we're there. So we rasterize it. We go to our quick select tool. We go on to pieces of the flower that we want to keep and we can do this fairly quickly which is probably where it got its name from and like that. remember we go edit cut edit paste and then bin the background layer and on the next one I'll show you a different way of doing the same thing it may or may not be slightly easier or quicker. So I'm going to put this one up here, rotate it around, and remember to put that on the top. Now, what's really nice about Photoshop is you can actually click on the layers rather than calling them layer one, etc. If I double tap it, you can see I can type in what it's called, so I know which layer is which. So I could do that for each of the flowers if I so desired. Make that a bit smaller. Coming out there. Now, I think I want them all to overlap. So if I put that one there, I'll put that one there, the daisy goes into the background. And the forget me not so there, and that is there. Okay. Now, we're going to do a few more flowers so you get the idea of what we're doing. Maybe not that one as such. Have a look at having some yellow flowers in the right background. 
So we'll drag that over. Put it at the top. Press enter. Drag it to the top of our piles. We can also do some rebounds and make the layers a bit bigger over here by selecting this area here and dragging it up. So we'll put that at the top. This one might be a bit tricky with the quick select tool because it was yellow here, but we'll give it a go. It might be quite tricky. Yeah, so we'll have to use the minus part of the brush tool and tell it which bits we don't want. Right, I'll show, you, I'll show you a different technique to do this. It might be quicker, it might not be, depends what works for you. We're going to go to Select, and we're going to click on Inverse. And you'll see we get a flashing line around the edge of the page. And this time on the keyboard, we're going to press Backspace. It says it won't let me because I forgot to rasterize my layer. <laughs> so we're going to press Backspace now. And then you see it's done the same thing. Press Control D, and we've cut it out. I don't know if it's quicker or not. It's definitely a different technique. And we'll place this flower I think, at the top here. We'll reorder it in front of that yellow one. You want that there or do you want it down here? Just a bit. Well, maybe right. Okay, now I think we need a couple more flowers and maybe some bits with some greenery on as well. So let's have a look. If we use this rainbow lantana, that would look really nice, right? So we drag it over. Press enter. Drag it to the top of our pile. We need to make sure we right click rasterize layer. We use our quick select. We select, we need to be on plus. Click onto the pink and yellow petals of the flower. Go all the way around and we'll do the inverse again so we're going to get select inverse backspace on the keyboard control d on the keyboard now i think that was actually quite efficient that time and i think this one will look lovely up uh, there so if we do that place that there and i think We're nearly there, right? We've got it in a bit. So let's have a look at the artist working for our inspiration. So sometimes there's extra bits with other flowers in. I quite like the flowers on the other side of the face as well. So we've got to go all the way around the face for this example. So we've got flowers around maybe parts of the eye. So we'll look at that. We'll do one more of our flowers. We'll have a look at this lily. I think that looks quite nice. Yeah, that could work. So we'll drag that one on and we'll do some bits with this one as well. Press enter, drag it to the top, right click, rasterize layer. So this is a digital collage and we are creating step by step, piece by piece, to create this work of art. And you can see we're doing it in real time so you can see just how long these things take and we'll go edit cut edit paste i might use some of the greenery from this picture later on so i'm not going to get rid of that completely i should drag it down put it at the very back and then i'll experiment with it later so this is the lily make sure i click on the right layer so layer so this is the lily press enter and i think this would look really lovely if we had it So we're getting some depth in it. Okay, now. What 
what we need to do now is there is one other thing that is quite striking about his work, and that's the shadows. So we're going to use the burn tool. I think we actually might put a little bit of this greenery in here. So if we use No, do you know what? I don't think we're going to use that piece. In hindsight, I don't think it'll work. It would be... Have a look at our folder. We haven't got anything directly with leaves on. I do tell you what, I do want that one in here as well. That's enough. Right, so we'll put that at the top. This will be the last flower we're going to use. Okay. We'll use our select tool again. Do the inverse way this time just to backspace, not rasterize. That happens every time, even though I try and remember it. So we've got inverse, we just press backspace, control D, scale that. So, I talked about adding some shadows a moment ago, so we're going to go back to the, this layer. We're going to go to our burn tool, which is here. We're going to make sure we're looking at shadows. We have a nice soft edge brush, make it the right kind of size, a little bit bigger. And we're going to just add in some, some darker tones underneath here, create some shadows. Tones as well. So we'll some shadows in there. And now, underneath each flower, and this can get quite complicated. So, underneath where this flower is, which is this one, so on the face, we're also going to put a bit of shadow in here. And then on the actual flower, so we find the flower. The pink one down here, do that one first. If we're going for mid tones, we're going to add some, maybe even on highlights. Bring the exposure up a little bit. So we're going to add a bit more. Try the mid tones as well. So we're going to create that illusion that things are behind each other. So there's those forget me nots things. Shadows on as well. And on the daisy at the top. So it shows it nice and where it's white you need to go onto the highlights and you can see where's the blue down there? There's some more shadows in here. There's that bright yellow one. Do some mid-tones as well. Can you see it's starting to give it a bit more depth? We need the blue ones again. And then onto the other shadows. So you can see that it's all starting to come together with some more depth. And there we have it. There's our face with flowers coming through. Personally, I quite like this. Um, bokey background that we've got on, but looking at the eyes, he does tend to have a plainer background. So I'll show you how to do that if we decided to go in that direction. We'll use our quick select tool one more time. Make sure we're on the layer with the face on, so we'll select all the bits that are to do with the face, the shoulder, etc. Use the minus on this piece here. I might actually keep that bit as a whole a bit neater. We're going to do this, we're going to copy and paste this one so we've got that as well. And then there it is with the background. And do you know what? I think it might look really nice with this as a 
two time back then, so we'll go. We'll keep that colour. Let's cancel this. So we'll click on this. We'll go for a darker tone there. We'll switch them around. We'll use the gradient tool. And we'll pop in a diagonal gradient behind. Make sure we are on the background layer. Make sure it is in the right place. And then we will do our gradient. I do not need that one. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, happy with how that looks now. I'm not sure if I if I'm gonna use just some final touches with the eraser tool. Make sure it's soft. Not too large. Fade out some of this. Okay, so it looks natural. Fade out some of that hairline. Just look anywhere where it doesn't look quite right. Just do a little fading. This edge here doesn't look very neat, so we're going to go on to the layer with that face on. Now this is where you can really improve a picture, just by spending a little bit of time thinking about the edges, smoothing things off, making things look really, really neat. Putting a bit more around. We want to keep that Jaggedy edge here, though, so that we can see it's been taken out. Now, do you know the layer with that flower on? Just gonna move that a little bit over and off. Just go back to the face again. This time, I'm going to use the eraser with a hard edge and just really find out that chin. Not too far. This is where you can zoom in and see all the details. So smooth that line out. Go it too far again. So we want to give the impression that this piece of face has been cut away from the object behind. There we go. And that bit just needs a little bit of smoothing there. Just tidy up that little edge there. A bit more of that. It's all about the fine details when you're making a piece of artwork. Okay, so we'll zoom back out. And here we are. There is our response to the artist, our own take on it, our own version. So, Marcelo Monreal, thank you very much for your inspiration. And, um, yeah, make sure we save it, obviously. Uh, save as. And we'll call it Face Fun Art. Flowers. Fantastic. So, thank you very much for watching this Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers video. Um, if you've enjoyed it and you want to learn some more about Photoshop and all sorts of photography stuff, remember to hit the subscribe button. And um, thank you very much for watching. Okay, and goodbye.